this is my tarantula room slash studio. This is the tarantula haven. And uh, that's I've got everything set up right now because I'm getting ready to shoot. Ignore all the mess on my desk over there. There's my computer where I'll be working. Uh, I haven't found a home for all that stuff yet. But anyway, I've got my slings over here in this one. I have got my Brachypelma homores, my um, Monocentropus balfouri, my GBB. I got my mantids down here. I got more stuff over here. My Gramostola pol oops, my Gramostola porteries right here. Scorpions over here. I brought Harriet home, and Harriet is my curly hair tarantula. I got my crested geckos over here. A lot of my pokies are over here, and except for that one is my Trinidad Chevron. Down below is where my Salmon Pink lives, and she's not out right now. And this is where my Nandu Colorato Velosus lives. And then over here, I've got several juveniles that are all in their little enclosures there. So anyway, you're going to get the full tour later on when I finally get around to it and you'll see all my different tarantulas. But I'm really excited to bring this to you and to shoot this first video in this room. And I, I'm so excited. I feel like Petco when he first got his dark den. Hello, all you cool cats and kittens. Ah, what am I saying? Hello, tarantula lovers. I'm Alex, and you're watching Tarantula Haven, and I'm coming to you from my Tarantula Haven, my brand new tarantula room that I was so excited to present to you. But like that show, this episode has been a train wreck. Everything that has that could go wrong has gone wrong. Um, when this is actually the following day after I shot the first part of it. And um, I just kept having one issue after another. I ended up recording part of it. And by the time I got about halfway into it, I realized that I had not plugged in my microphone. So I had absolutely no sound whatsoever, except for what came off of this camcorder right here. So I am going to try my best to salvage this thing somehow and piece it together and that way I can give you something that is presentable. Whatever I can't, uh, any of the audio that I lost, I'll just, I guess, give you a voiceover on it. But fortunately, if it dealt with the tarantulas or if it dealt with me showing you anything up close, um, it, it, I had the camcorder going, so it ended up recording the audio for that. So I apologize in advance. It was just, I, I don't know, maybe it was just the new room new routines and things on setting up and just the excitement of shooting in the new room that threw me off but i just kept having issue after issue um, i ended up running out of uh memory on, at one point the card ran out another point the battery died on my camera so it was, yeah, it was just a fiasco so anyway let's go ahead and press on forward i've got a couple of things to show to you before i get into the meat of this video which is basically um i guess redoing my monocentropus balfouri uh communal and before i get into anything um, i wanted to give a huge shout out and a huge thank you to richard of the tarantula collective um, i bothered him before i ended up getting my room and everything and I was asking him questions about lighting because I saw on some of his Instagram photos that he had a certain type of lighting um, in his room. And I was asking him about it because I was considering purchasing the same type of lighting. Well, fortunately for me that I did contact him because he told me that he didn't particularly like those lights and that they were a little too harsh for him and that he had invested in a different light. Sorry, that was my phone. But he had invested in a different light and I think you saw it, it was the big dome thing that you saw when I first showed you my tarantula room. And um, that was what he recommended and I looked at it, researched it and um, I was so glad that I had spoken to him because he was more than forthcoming with all the information, everything that, that um, all the stuff that he liked about it so I ended up buying the same light and I'm very happy with it um, you're seeing it right now and it, and it puts out really really good light and really uh, 
just improves the situation here in this room. So thank you so much, Richard. I really appreciate all your uh, help on picking out this new lighting for me. And before I continue further, I did want to mention to you that this episode is brought to you by the Get Bit brand. Um, they contacted me on um, on Instagram and they sent me a package. They said they wanted to send me some stuff. So I had actually heard about them before um, and I held on to the package probably for a good two weeks, maybe a little bit more than that. I hadn't even opened the package or anything. And yesterday I did a, an unboxing, I unpackaged it and uh, inside of it was this shirt and I love it black is my favorite you know kind of shirt and uh, the the design on it is just incredible it's an amazing design I really love it and um, so yeah I had heard about them before because I saw that Richard of the Tarantula Collective had received some stuff from them and uh, Tarantula Cat had also received some stuff from them and I was like wow that's some really cool stuff and then I was very shocked when they they contacted me um, on Instagram and asked me if they could send me some stuff as well so I was like yeah you know I was very delighted and sure enough they got me this shirt and uh, there was a card in there and I want to share that with you um, so it says uh, Alex hope you enjoyed this stuff Huge fans keep up with the awesome videos and they even drew my little logo right there which is really really cool. So I'm going to save this. I love this. And uh, they also sent me some stickers. So I got these uh, Get Bit brand stickers right here. I like those. I'm going to find a place to put those. And uh, they also sent me some of the uh, little Dram Vial stickers right there. So uh, that one's uh, Need More Substrate and uh, this one has a little tarantula on there and I don't quite know what that looks like. It might be a Salmopius Arminia or a Venezuelan Sun Tiger, which looks pretty cool. And then this one, uh, stuff happens, right? Uh, and they got the, uh, the uh, Caravana Versa color there, which they're notorious for spraying poop on the walls and on you. And uh, that's a very cool, uh, sticker right there and currently these stickers are actually um, sold out on their website they are very very popular they're really really cool and uh, I do know that they are working really hard to get more in stock but because of the situation and things that are going on right now things are very slow so um, when those go up they'll have them posted and you can get your very own so thank you so much to the get bit brand I really appreciate it thank you for the kind words and I appreciate the t-shirt, I will wear it proudly. And yet another cool thing that happened is uh, I had a friend who um, asked me before to babysit his tarantulas while he was doing the Appalachian Trail. And uh, when he did that, he had bought me a Harpactera poker piece as a, a, I guess, payment for watching his tarantulas. So I was very appreciative of that. And, and the fact that it turned out to be female was even better. So um, he contacted me again and he said that this time he was doing the Pacific Trail and wanted to know if I would consider babysitting his tarantulas again. So I, again I agreed and um, unfortunately because of the current COVID-19 situation he was unable to do the trip so everything got cancelled. Well he contacted me again and he said that he was considering putting in an order and he wanted to order some tarantulas and he wanted to know if I wanted to go in on it with him and uh, maybe split the shipping in half. So I said, sure, you know, I've got a little bit of money coming in and uh, I'd be able to pick out maybe a couple tarantulas or stuff and uh, maybe split the, the shipping. So anyway, he was looking around in, at different websites trying to figure out where he wanted to order from and he ended up deciding on Beasley, Beasley Exotics because she's local, she lives in Homosassa Springs, Florida, and uh, it's like an hour away from him. So he said, if I buy from her, then I'll go pick them up and then I'll pick yours up too because I live a little bit further away from her. So I said, cool. So we put in our orders and uh, we met up because we both had to buy some feeders. So we met up in Gainesville at Hogtown Reptiles and uh, we exchanged tarantulas. I actually gave him uh, one of my leftover babies from my Salmopius Cambridgei, and I gave him an OBT because I have a whole bunch of them. So um, he was pretty happy about that. So anyway, let me show you what I got. And uh, one of the things that I got was a freebie of a um, Salmopius Erminia, which I only have one, and that was one that I got from 
Beasley's Exotics also, but now I have another one. So let's see if I can show it to you. I don't know where it is there. Oh, it's down at the very bottom. So it's a tiny, tiny little sling. I'm kind of worried about it. I don't like that it sits down there at the substrate. Um, my experience with the Salmopis Cambridgei, the ones that made the webbing were the ones that survived. The ones that sat on the substrate and didn't do anything usually ended up languishing and dying. So hopefully I can get this little guy comfortable and webbing and eating. So um, I put in this little piece of cork bark there to kind of help it give it a little hiding spot and maybe feel it, may, let it feel more secure. So hopefully that one will do well. And the main things that I got were um, two Pisilotheria ornata. And I was really happy to see these on her list because I hadn't seen them before. And these are Sri Lankan species, which of course, since demand, you can't cross state lines with them or anything like that. So being able to get these locally was really, really cool. So now I have a couple of Sri Lankans. Um, <clears throat> and I'd like to add those to my collection because of course I do want to breed them eventually and it's kind of something that we need here in our community it, it, within our state especially since we can't cross state lines with them so um, you can't really see them in there because they're very very skittish and they go right down into their little hides so anyway I'll try my best to show them to you but we probably won't see them right now. So those are Priscillatheria ornata. So I'm really happy to add these to my collection. And uh, thank you so much to Brian for um, going in with me and, you know, we putting an order in together. And he uh, got me this little patch right here. And he ordered this from spiderstitches.com, which is a, a little Etsy store, I believe. And he said that that was custom made and that is a Harpectera poker piece right there. So I thought that was very thoughtful of him. That was really cool. And I wish I had a denim jacket or something that I could sew it on, but I'll find something, some, some place to put that. Uh, my daughter's already wanting to claim it and putting it on a backpack or something. So uh, we will see. But anyway, thank you so much, Brian. That was really cool of you, and I appreciate you going to pick these up for me. Now, on to the subject of the video. Um, what I'm doing today is I'm not really rehousing my Monocentropus balfouri, but I am adding some new wood into the um, Monocentropus balfouri enclosure because the wood that I had on there were just some sticks that my daughter had kind of put together on, on a project that she did for her art class and I told her I wanted it so that I could use it for that. And it looked really nice at first, but it didn't look all that great, especially after they webbed it up and everything. And I'll show you some, you know, what it looks like in a little bit. But I ended up picking up some spider wood. And spider wood um, looks like this. And it's basically roots, I believe. This was much larger when I got it, but I've since cut it to pieces and you'll see that also. But um, I wanted to put something that was a little bit more aesthetically pleasing to add some anchor points and stuff and have them reweb the enclosure because I kind of didn't like how it was looking. Um, but to be honest with you, it was also, if you follow me on Instagram, I haven't seen very much of my Monocentropus balfouri. Ever since about maybe October of last year, they kind of went into hiding. And they do that anyway periodically. Sometimes when it gets cooler, they sense it and they go underground and then you don't see them for a little bit. But then they start emerging and you'll start seeing them here and there. And I did, I saw them here and there, um, maybe one at a time, sometimes two, and at the most I saw three. And they all look like nice little fat females. So um, one of them happened to look like the little runt that got its leg caught in the in the uh, tape when I first had them in the first enclosure. But, um, you know, I can't be sure, but it was a, a rather small one. So anyway, those are the only three that I kept seeing, and I kept seeing them over and over, but I didn't see the other three. So this is kind of a wellness check as well. I've had people tell me, you should just leave them alone. They're probably all still in there. You'll be fine. And uh, But I've also seen some horror stories with Monocentropus balfouri. Um, some people say they're overrated, that they're just kind of uh, pet holes, which I didn't really believe, but because I saw a lot of activity when I first got them, a lot of social interaction and all that kind of stuff, but now nothing. And just seeing one here and there, you know, it was getting me really, really worried. And uh, so I decided that I was going to use the excuse of 
making the enclosure a little bit more aesthetically pleasing and also doing a wellness check to see if I still have all six because I'm really worried and I think that maybe I only have three. So that is the reason I'm doing this video and uh, I'll show you pretty much how I did all that. Uh, once again, I apologize. Some of the video doesn't have any audio, so I'll probably do a voiceover on those parts. But the parts that do involve me using my camcorder will have audio, and you will get to hear that. So anyway, let's go ahead and press on with that part. So what I got here is all the sticks and everything that I had put in originally, they're all right here. They made their little web castle and everything, but they kind of quit on that. They quit making their web castle and they became more subterranean. And then they ended up putting out all this um, substrate and everything. They kicked out molts, as you can see right here. This is a molt um, that they kicked out. And, and they didn't usually do that. I used to not see any molts in, that come out. They used to stay inside, but now they're kicking out molts. So um, you, you've got a little bit of molt right there. And like, like you can see right here, it's all substrate, all substrate all the way around. They've got a tunnel right here where they come out. There's another one that they come out through right there. And then this seems to be their main burrow right there and that one kind of stays open all the time and I can usually peek in there and see legs, but I'm not too sure about right now. Um, it looks like I can see something, but not real sure. All right, but anyway, we'll take a look and we'll open this up and see what's going on. So what I'm doing here is just explaining how I'm gonna take my Monocentropus balfouri and transfer them to their old enclosure from their current enclosure until I get things situated. And here I'm just explaining how I um, am going to use the spider wood to put into the new enclosure and how I had to cut the larger piece and attach pieces onto the smaller piece so that it would fit into the, um, the Balfouri's enclosure.
Yeah, I'm seeing a bunch of roaches in here. What are they eating? Are they fasting? Oh, oh, there goes one. All right. Let me see her over there. Nice little blue one there. Oh, went back down. Come on, come on up. All right, went back down. They're popping up though. All right, see the roaches all running around there? Apparently that's their hideout. Okay, so that's the roaches. All right, let's see if we can get the tarantulas out. So there's a tunnel right here. Yep, I see some legs. Come on, you. Oh, that's a big one. All right. So we got one. That one went straight up. Switch these out. to go in here. All right, in the meantime, let me put this lid back on. All right, there we go. Okay, so let's see if we can get you down. Come on, big guy. Big old scramble for the lid there. I don't want to come down either. Come down. There we go. All right. One down. You can see it there. All right, let's try for another one. It's gonna, I have a feeling it's gonna be harder than it looks. <laughs> All right, so we'll put you over here. Number two, let's see. Oh, I see legs right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and try. Come on out. Back under. All right, so this is when it starts getting kind of weird because you start seeing like little legs and stuff sticking out. And those are old molts there. So um, I have to be real careful and make sure there's not a T in there and go ahead and move that out. Pull out any molts that I find.
Okay. So put this here. Kind of poke behind. Come on. Come on. All right. So there's a big girl right there. With that big abdomen. All right, so let's see if we can get her into the enclosure. Pause this for a second. All right, this is gonna be kind of tricky with two of them in there because the other one's gonna want to bolt too. comfortable about this. Nope, nope, nope. You can slip out from under. Alright, I'm gonna have to come up with a different method. So what I ended up having to do was um, I couldn't put them into the same enclosure without them escaping. So I ended up getting some of my mainstay jars that I have. I have plenty of other little jars that I can use and figured I would put them into individual um, jars just to keep them separated and avoid the whole trouble of having them scramble out while I'm trying to put another one in. Put this aside. Get my mainstay. Now this may turn out to be just as bad, so we'll see. Because I surely don't want to go down. Come on. Don't come back up. There we go. All right, tried to shoot back up. Okay, so that's number two. Put you aside for a little bit. All right, let's see if we can get another one. All right, so here's another molt. Feel like there's one in this bunch right here. So I'm going to kind of carefully pick that apart. Yeah, right here in this little sack. All right, so let's get this out of here. So right here in this corner, there's another piece of cork bark, which I'm assuming they've probably made as part of their hide. So I'm going to pull that up. I'm suspecting that one's going to come running out of there. Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. Oh, I'm seeing two. So I know at least have four now. 
who's going to come out first. Okay, this is where it gets tricky, so I better put my lid up here. Because I know somebody's going to make a run for it. There we go. Oh, he went back on. Come on, you! All right, here we go, here we go. Watch out. Come on up. All right. So I've got another one. to run out of battery on here so I'm gonna switch that out real quick so that I don't run out in the middle of what I'm doing <clears throat> I'm so embarrassed right now <laughs> I just realized that this whole time I've been recording my microphone was not plugged in so that means my intro my whole thing about the my unboxing the get bit brand stuff None of that got recorded. Um, there is some stuff that got recorded on this microphone here from this camcorder, but on my main camera, no, I didn't get any, <laughs> any of that sound. So I'll try to see what I can salvage and I guess I'll voice over the rest, but I, I apologize. I don't know I guess I was just so excited about the new room and everything and when I set up my camera I forgot to plug in the microphone so um, here I go I'm gonna continue uh, I know I have at least four um, I've got one in here I've got two already in there there's one more in there I'm hoping I still have six so it's looking good if I have four then that means I may have two more in there so we'll see um, so right now my main concern is just getting them into these temporary enclosures I had to switch this camera over to this side which makes it hard for me to see what I'm recording <clears throat> so I'm gonna set that up real quick and go ahead and see if I can get this guy in here without him bolting out so this one was pretty fast very bolty all right go down there you go all right don't take off all right and this one is looking very blue can't tell let's see if you can see that but I'm not sure I can't tell if it's male or female definitely not mature if it is male let me show you there so anyway, um, we'll figure that out later. That's not my concern right now. I'm just trying to get them pulled out. So let's see if we can get the other one out and see if there's two more in there after that. So let's continue. All right, so I got a couple of these little enclosures here. These I picked up at the last Repticon I went to in Orlando. And um, I was gonna use them for my um, dwarf ranch. I got a couple of dwarfs on an episode coming up here soon. So yeah, these are going to be for rehousing on that, but I figured I could use them to rehouse these um, in Balfour. So let me go ahead and see if I can catch that next one. All right, here we go. So here's another mold and another one. It's a pretty good size mold right there. All right, you see what I mean? Um, they used to not kick out their molds. Here's another one. And people always talk about how theirs kick out molts. Mine never do. They always keep them inside of their burrows. And they only just recently started kicking them out. Okay, so I know there's one in here. Let's see if I can get them out. There's yet another molt. All right, so I think he is right here. I'm seeing some legs sticking out there. So let's put that there. Whoop. 
Hold it backward. There we go. All right, so this is another blue, blue looking one. So that is number four. Do we have a number five? We'll see. Oh, yep, I'm seeing some legs. But we do have a number five. Oh, we got a six too. Good size. That's a nice little fat girl right there. Container, so hold on a second. All right, and I believe we have number six right here. This would be really, really shy. Biggest one of all, I believe. It's got some weight to it. That's a big one. All right, definitely female there. Okay, so let's move her out. Get her to come out. I'll bolt out. So I have all six. I'm happy to see that. I'm glad that Tom was right and everybody else who said that, that there would still be in there, that they, they are right. I don't know why they haven't been coming out. It's just I only see three at a time. So I assume that there was only three left, but there they are. Um, Tom did mention that sometimes he doesn't see them for a long time. There was a male or some males that he didn't see for a very, very long time and then all of a sudden they, there they were. So they just come out periodically. I'm sorry guys, I don't know what's going on with me today. Um, here it is, the premiere of my new tea room and I'm completely blowing it. Um, I ended up, the card in my camera ended up filling up so I had to switch out cards. So I don't know how much I caught of that last section where I captured the sixth one and put her in here. And the last thing I said was that I was going to go ahead and set this up and then put in the new stuff in there and then put all the tarantulas back in. So I apologize. Uh, you know, this is just 
one of those things that happens. So hopefully we won't have any more of this in the future and we'll work all the bugs out. Appreciate you hanging in there. All right, now comes the fun part, trying to get them into here. And uh, I got all kinds of different enclosures to do that. So um, hopefully they'll try to hide inside of all of the twisted wood and maybe not just bolt straight out to the top. So help me wish me luck here. Look at that. Beautiful. All right, so we got you in there. Put the lid on so you don't bolt out. Stay down. One down. <laughs> this one is being stubborn. It doesn't want to go down. Come on. There you go. There you go. Oh, that makes it nice. They grab onto that wood. Look at that. Gorgeous. All right. That's two. Hey, here goes another nice fat girl. Awesome. All right, that's three. Yeah, I feel like that's gonna be a little bit rough. Yeah. 
here. if I can get it to climb straight off the lid into the enclosure. on the lid. Oh, it just went down. All right, let's see if we can get this one without too much trouble. I need to make these guys climb down. There we go. Okay, last one. cannot win uh, my battery just died on my main camera I am sorry so I've just been plagued with one thing after another for this episode so hopefully that's my big screw up starting out and the rest will be smooth sailing I hope um, anyway as I was saying I'm so glad to have them out and they probably won't web up until a little bit later so I'll try to capture that but um, yeah, uh, I don't know if I have males, which ones are males and which ones are females, but I do have some suspect males in there. And uh, it looks like I've got some, some females, about three, three good sized females. But um, I also I was saying that I would like to possibly breed them is sometime in the near future, but that seems to be uh, a little ways away. Um, but anyway, um, I, I really enjoy the Monocentropus belfori. Um, again, my experiences have been, at first, I saw them quite often. They came out, they would eat and come hunting and all that kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden, nothing. So um, I don't know if that's just a regular thing or if I'm just missing it because I'm not staying up late at night checking on them or anything like that. But we will see. So anyway, um, it's been an experience. It's always an experience trying to rehouse them. It's always... Um, a, a very crazy thing because and it's not so much that they're hard it's just that when you have more than one tarantula in the same enclosure it's very tricky to keep them all in there while you're trying to capture one and making sure the other ones don't bolt out so that's pretty much the only thing about the the monocentropus is if you keep them communally 
So that wraps it up for me today. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to give a special thank you to the Get Bit brand. Um, thank you so much for the t-shirt. You can go to their website. I have a link down below for you to check them out. They have t-shirts, they have stickers and other merchandise that you can get there. And uh, it's really cool. It's all tarantula related. Um, these stickers are currently out of stock. They're sold out. They're very popular, but they're working very hard to get new ones out there for you. Um, right now with everything going on, it's a little bit difficult to get things going so when things start to pick up again I'm sure they'll have plenty more in stock for you. Um, also I want to give a special thank you to Richard of the Tarantula Collective. Thank you so much for helping me with the lighting and uh, helping me pick out my light. I really appreciate it. I love it and it's really made it definitely made a big improvement on my new um, tarantula room here. So thank you so much, Richard. And uh, that wraps it up. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you want to support this channel, I have a Redbubble store where I sell Tarantula Haven merchandise. And uh, I'll post a link to that down below. All the proceeds from the merchandise will, get, will go directly to help grow and support this channel. Until next time, keep loving them tarantulas.